Father was a praiser. Somebody put your sanctified hands together. a sad occasion for me because as long as I remember being in this world I remember seeing Mother Flood and there was no difference in Mother Flood she was a saved sanctified Holy Ghost filled powerful woman of God and so there's no doubt in my mind that she's got her crown that's why I can lift up my hands and say Lord I thank you that's why I can give God the highest praise hallelujah Hey, yeah, let me, let me stick to the paper, because some of y'all looking at me strange, so I'm going to look down at the paper. But the first word that I find on this paper is celebrating, so I know I'm in the right place. The life of Mother Mary Gilmore Harvey Flood. A virtuous woman. Sunday, March the 5th, 2023, 2 o'clock p.m. right here at True Deliverance Holiness Church. Yours truly, Monte Jackson, officiant, Bishop Nolan T. Torbert, pastor and eulogist. We've got a program laid out, and so we're going to follow that. We're going to ask for a selection from the choir followed by an Old Testament reading by Elder Betty Hostick, New Testament reading by Elder Jerry Smith, and the prayer of comfort 
by Pastor Eric Rowe. God bless you. Mother Flood got hers. I can see her smiling. At, they had a picture up there, and she was looking down on us like she was saying, "It all is well, all is well." Thank you, Jesus. I've been reading from Job 19 verses 25 through 27. It said, "I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that He shall stand at the latter day upon the earth, and I shall see Him, see God, whom I shall see for myself." And my eyes shall be whole and not another. May God add a blessing to the readers and the hearers of his word. Thank you.
Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. I don't know why we're so quiet because Mother was a heavy hitter. I said she was a heavy hitter. What do you mean she's a heavy hitter? She knocked a home run. Amen. She done knocked a home run. Amen. Ain't no use nobody else doing nothing because she done knocked a home run. If the bases were loaded, everybody done made it home. Amen. 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 We want to encourage the family, amen, at this time to look to the Lord. Uh, truly, amen, God is able, amen, to see you through, amen, this time, amen. Uh, we're here to do the New Testament scripture from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6, and it reads as following. It says, let not your heart be troubled. If ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That's where I am. There ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know. And the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. May the reading of God's word add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his divine word. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Glory to God. We do give honor, amen, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We give honor, amen, to Bishop Torbert. Amen. To the ministers. Amen. We give honor, amen, to this family. Amen. In Jesus' name, to the friends. Amen. We give honor where honor is due today. Amen. God is a good God. And he's worthy to be praised. Amen. In the midst of all, God's still good to us. Amen. She fought a good fight. She finished her course. She kept the faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. May we pray at this time. Dear Father, in Jesus' name, once again we come before the throne of grace. God calling upon your most righteous name. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God, we thank you, Lord, for our dear mother. Oh, God, she kept the faith. God, she done finished her course. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, God, we ask you to have your way today, Lord. God, send the anointing today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, send the power of God. God, somebody need to be delivered today, Lord. God, somebody need to be saved today, Lord. God, somebody need to be set free today, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God, we still trust you today, Lord. God, we still give you glory today. We still give you honor, Lord. God, we trust your name today, Lord. God, have your way in our life today, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God, we bless your name today, God. God, we give you honor, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord. Oh, God, for our dear mother, Lord. God, thank you, Lord, that you are a learner to us, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you today, Lord. We thank you for the family and friend, Lord. God, we ask you to script them today, Lord. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you right now, Lord. Father, for your goodness and your mercy. God, we thank you for the power of God. God, we thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness. Father, we ask you to have your way today, Lord. God, stir up your people, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus, God. Let us give you some glory today, Lord. Let us give you some praise, Lord, because you still deserve the glory. You still deserve the praise. You still deserve the honor. Come on and bless your name. Father, we thank you right now in Jesus' name. Come on, stand up and give God some glory today. Come on, stand up and give him some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give him some glory. Come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. Y'all don't want to have no church today. Hallelujah. Come on and praise him. She would want us to praise him. She would want us to give him some glory. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name. Come on and give him some glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Come up on set hey. Yay! Come on and praise him. Come on and praise him. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy of our praise. I said he's worthy of our praise. My Lord. Listen. Thank Pastor Rowe for that powerful prayer. Pastor Word of Face Apostolic Church right here in Opelika, Alabama. Thank God for you and your church family being a part of our service today. God bless you. Listen, we, we're going to move on in a program and take it to one more notch with a selection from Sister Gwendolyn Smith. Oh, I'm sorry, Sister Gwendolyn Hughley. God bless you. At a time like this, I sure wish I could sing when I see Jesus. But that just ain't, that ain't what I was asked to sing. So I'm going to sing what I was asked to sing. But I know that lady, I believe that lady is going to see Jesus. You hear me? And I feel it. Thank you, Jesus. But I was asked to sing, may the work I've done speak for me. Pray for me. May the work I've done speak for me. May the work I've done speak for me. When I'm resting in my grave, there is nothing that can be said. May the work I've done speak for me. May the work I've done. 
Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Sister Hughley. Amen. And truly, Mother's life that she lived has spoken for her. And we praise God for that. Now we've come to the time where we're going to have some expressions. And they've got it printed on the program. If you have one, it says, two minutes each, please. They were so nice and put that please on there. And so I'm going to be clocking you. So um, if, I, if I stand up here, may the work I've done speak for me. Means, means that your time is up. And, and we, we thank God for you, and we want to hear what you have to say uh, about Mother Flood, who was so impactful in all of our lives. But we want to be respectful of the family's time. And so at this time, you may come down and, and give some expressions. To the podium there. Test, test. Good afternoon to everyone. Um, as I stand here giving all praises to God and thanking him for all his many blessings, realizing that this is a good day. Yeah. This is a celebration. Yeah. My Aunt Mary has lived her life, and she lived it well. And, 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 and I can tell you, and from the family, some of the family members that are here, she is the reason that all of us migrated to New York. I can remember when I came out of high school, uh, and, and, I, and I went to New York to live with her. And, 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 and she never let me forget that, well, you know, you, you, you belong to me. And when she wanted to get on my mom's nerves, what well, she said, who was a twin sister, uh, there is my child. You just had her, that's all. <laughs> and, 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 I, and I tell you, when I went to live with her, um, she only had two rules, and those rules were, you can't be out at night, and you got to go to church. She was a God-fearing person, and she went to church, and she, 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 she tried to see to it that all of us went to church. So Aunt Mary was very special to all of us. I can remember all the times when we came, when I came up to, from Demopolis to, to check on her, and, 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 and when she didn't need to be driving anymore, but my brother said, you got to tell. I said, why me? <laughs> and, and, and when I tried to tell her, she said, y'all trying to put me in my grave before time. I said, well, you know what? I, I said to them, I know who can do it. She'll do anything Bishop asked her to do. <laughs> if he say to her, it's time for you to put this car down, she'll put the car down. But she loved her church. She loved all of you. Uh, she was just such a loving person, and, and I'm just glad to be a part of her because she's the reason that most of, as I said, she's the reason that most of the family members who went to New York, we went and we lived with Aunt Mary. Mama's kids and Mars kids, most of, those, most of those two sisters' kids, we all went through Aunt Mary, and most of us slept in her house, ate her food, and she tried to keep us in line. But Aunt Mary was a loving person. And I just want to take this time while I'm standing here to thank her church family, to thank everyone who played a part in her life. They were there. They, Alicia would call me and said, mother needs this, a mother, whatever. Whenever I got there, there was someone there. I could always call and say, Sister Diane, how is she doing today? Or someone was always there. And I just thank God for you. Yes. And, and may God continue to bless each of you. It's my prayer. Thank you. Thank everybody for coming out to reiterate my, um, what my cousin has said. Um, there's times that me and Aunt Mary, we had like a, a very great, a great time. There's a couple of times I'm gonna share with you guys what she uh, mentioned with me. One time, um, one time we uh, was driving on the ceiling of Hemden and 
you inside of one of my one of my um, my 300 my Chrysler 300 I had just rented. And she said, "Ooh, this thing right here is a spaceship. I don't want to touch nothing and break nothing, boy." I said, "Okay, Mary, this is all right. You don't have to worry about nothing." But another time, we went out to eat, and um, every time I come down, I would take Aunt Mary anywhere we go. We would go to um, out to a restaurant, and we would go to um, probably like to the mall or something. But one time, we went to the restaurant, and we ordered some food at Longhorn. She had finished, she didn't finish eating the food. My aunt wasn't wasteful at all. She was very like conservative. She was very respectful. She didn't want to waste no much time or waste anything right there for her. She was very nice. So she was sitting down and she was eating the food and she didn't eat all the food because they gave a lot of food to Longhorn. So I ate my food and she said, um, she said, how much did you pay for this here food? I said, I said, it just cost like $32. She said, ooh, $32? She pulled the plate back to her, and she started eating every single thing on the plate. I said, hey, I said, you ain't got to worry about that. Money's not a problem for me. And, it's, and every time I come down to see her, I will always give her some money, because that's what you're supposed to do. So one time she told me, she said, Lamont, if you give me any more money, I'm gonna go outside and get a switch, and I'm gonna beat your butt. I said, okay, Mary, no problem. So I stayed there for like seven days, I think it was. So when I was about to leave, I had to trick her. So I went to Woolworth, and I bought a box. And when I bought the box, I put a, a bunch of ones and fives and twins inside, and when I left, I gave it to her and said, all right, man, Mary, I'll see you later on. She held the box, she said, boy, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you. But the more the story is that I really, I'm going to really miss my aunt, and um, this is difficult for me to stand up here right now. I know you give me the two minutes. I know you are. But I'm really going to miss my aunt, and um, I'm grateful for the family, and thank you all for coming. My wife, great aunt, amen, in Jesus' name, amen. When we first got married, amen, her auntie was very good to us, amen. She gave us some money when we first got married. Matter of fact, she gave us some more money than anybody gave us, amen. She was really good to us. I remember one time we spent the night with her, amen, in Jesus' name. I appreciate the Lord for her, amen, in Jesus' name. Her and Evangelist Willingham, they used to get at me at all the, t all the time. Amen, in Jesus' name. I thank and praise God, amen, for each and every one of you. Amen. She loved her son, and uh, I think it was her grandson. I believe he, at, one, at one point he was from, I think he was living in South Carolina. Amen, in Jesus' name. But uh, him in the blue, I believe. Amen, in Jesus' name. But she loved her family. Amen, in Jesus' name. She loved each and every one of you. God bless you. We love you. In Jesus' name.
bring the oil back tomorrow now. <laughs> that next day I brought that oil back too. But true deliverance, you all have did a wonderful thing. I mean, I saw women coming and going all the time. So you did a good work. And you can't come down. God bless you. She would go even when the young people wouldn't go. That's how much she loved her church family and her pastor. And anyway, um, Carolyn and I were talking the other day when we were saying that when we used to clean up um, Bishop Arthur with Mother Flood, Mother Flood would be in Bishop bathroom just for humming, just for cleaning. Me and Carolyn would have wiped out the whole office and Mother Flood is still in the bathroom, still humming and cleaning. So we waiting on her to come out so we can back them out and she'll come out laughing. She'll say, y'all waiting on me? <laughs> and we say, yes ma'am, we waiting on you to come out so we can finish up. But Mother Flood, she was faithful in everything that she did. And we want to say, Mother Flood, we love you and we're going to miss you. You left a legacy to all of us. You affected everyone's life that you met. Praise the Lord. I'm sorry. Forgive me for not coming down. Um, like my husband said, my Aunt Mary was my great great aunt um, to the side of the family. We appreciate God for her life, amen, and her story. And just to share that, I don't know if anybody in the family know how to make an egg pie. She, she loved making those egg pies. I see your sister Vera back there shaking her head. So she taught me how to make those egg pies, and we um, I lived with her. Um, for a little while, I'm just staying down at the house with her some. So she taught me how to do that, and I love the way she would bake her chicken. I don't know what it was about baking chicken, but she could bake some chicken and make them egg pies. And so I told her I would keep. I went to my husband. I went to see her a couple of well that Saturday before she passed. I said, Mother, I'm gonna keep the egg pies in the family. So I passed the recipe down to one of my nieces. So y'all see an egg pie come across the table, you'll know where it came from. Amen. <laughs> Hey man, praise the Lord, everybody. Um, I had the opportunity to work with her. I mean, this is the last comment. God bless you. Go ahead, Elder Jerry. Hey man, I had the opportunity to work with her on the prayer team. And um, I just wanted to say that the devil knew who she was. Uh, I, I'm reminded of the scripture where, where Sabak had two sons, and, and they called themselves going to run up on the devil, you know. And the man was possessed with the devil. And the devil whooped him and ran him out their clothes. But I said that to say, that woman of God, she had a relationship with God. And when she spoke, the devil flee. I seen, but right here in True Deliverance Church, we've seen so many miracles took, took place. I mean, I mean, devils had to flee. Now, uh, now you have to know, when, when devil come into the presence of the anointing, the Bible said the anointing destroyed the yoke. She was an anointed woman. And I just want to share that. Amen. God bless you. Thank each and everyone that came down to share something about Mother Flood. I, mean, I know we can be here all day talking about what a great woman she was. Amen. And how much she imparted into us all. So God bless you. Thank you so much for that. Now we're going to have the reading of our resolution by Sister Annette Pitts. Mother Mary Gilmore Harvey Flood. 
that's what we call them, the flood. So if y'all here, we got Harvey and flood. But anyway, <laughs> we all know who we're talking about. Who was a faithful, dedicated, and committed member of the True Deliverance Holiness Church, Inc.? She was saved, sanctified, baptized in Jesus' name, and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. She believed in dancing and praising God. She was a very hard worker and was very instrumental in the building of the True Deliverance Holiness Church, Inc. and the Kingdom of God. She was a smart, sweet, compassionate, and yet bold servant of God. She insisted on being a blessing to the poor and those in need. She imparted wisdom in all she met. She was a brilliant woman of God that added true value to everyone that was graced to be in her presence. In 2019, she was recognized and received a proclamation from the office of the mayor and was given the key of the city of Auburn. Whereas the honorable pastor and members of True Deliverance Holiness Church Inc. are desirous of expressing their heartfelt sympathy and offer encouragement to the family. We thank God for having the opportunity to have worship with Mother Flood. She was very precise and believed in always being on time at wherever she would go. She was very, she was very polite and grateful and would always say, thank you, darling. Some more of her favorite saying was, praise him, love you, and I'm going to spank you. You know, that was her little, you know, I can't say it like she said, but. Anyway, she had those particular words that she always would say, but she would say it in the spirit of love. Whereas Mother Flood moved from Alabama to New York in 1949, where she lived and worked for six years at the Nyack Boys School and the Rockland Psychiatry Center for 27 years, from 1955 until her retirement in 1982. After moving back to Alabama, she did domestic work and was also a caretaker. She was a faithful volunteer to the Center for the Elderly in Opelika, Alabama for many years. She also would bake egg custard, yams, make pear preserve, and etc. And she would bless different ones. She was truly loved and respected by her pastor and the church family, and she loved and cared for them too. She was truly a blessing to the church by faithfully serving as the first church mother, missionary, Mother Zion, intercessory prayer team, women ministry, and she's president of the Founders Day Committee, a faithful Sunday school attendant, Bible class attendant, and Sunday morning worship. Until her health fell, she was driving herself to church until the age of 92 for every service and was cleaning and taking care of her pastor's office. And she really loved reading and hearing the word of God and seeing what thus says the Lord. She was also about the kingdom. Now therefore, be it resolved by the pastor and the members of True Deliverance Holiness Church, Inc., as follows, that the above recitals are true and correct, that we pause to celebrate the homecoming celebration of our church mother, Mother Flood, and express sympathy to her survivors. Now therefore, be it further resolved that the church executive administrator Lady Gail Diane Torbert here is, is hereby authorized and directed to spread this resolution upon the official record of True Deliverance Holiness Church, Inc. and transmit a proper and validated copy to her only son, John Lewis Harvey, whom she loved dearly. Done this fifth day of March, 1923, True Deliverance Holiness Church, Dr. Nolan T. Torbert, senior pastor and founder. May God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much. Now we're going to have reflections by Elder Calvin Patrick as a faithful church mother and member. Then we will have a selection by the choir. And after the choir, the next voice we will hear is the Honorable Bishop Nolan T. Torbert to bring the eulogy. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen, amen. Who, who all know God is a good God? Amen, amen. Who all know God is a good God? You know, <clears throat> our heart is heavy.
our heart is heavy, but we know with God, he's going to see us through it. Wow. Amen. I'm up here um, to talk as a faithful church mother and member. As a faithful church member, Mother Flood was faithful from day one. Listen, always arriving to church early. I wasn't going to say on time, but she always arrived early and with a smile and always wearing her hats. And when she would come down, the first thing, she wouldn't stop till she get right here. Kneel and pray. And, you know, mother, all the way up until her older age, you know, she served on different, different boards. She wore many, many hats. And she was active and taking an initiative. The different hats that she wore, she just didn't wear them for style now. The, 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 the different hats she had in the ministry that, that carried authority. She didn't let you get away with nothing now. She held you accountable for being responsible for what you're supposed to have been doing. Amen. You know, and she on the Founders Day Committee, she was the president of the Founders Day Committee. She kept my wife and them going. And sisters of Trish and them and their team. I mean, she was, she was adamant about it, too, when they tried to make certain changes and stuff. And I'd be hearing them talking on the phone on their conference call. Mother, no. Nah. <laughs> you know, I said, wow, okay, okay, okay. And she was a treasure of Mother's Design. She was on the intercessor prayer team, as Elder Jerry was stated. And like Sister Annette just read, hey, she took pride in cleaning the bishop's office. You know, and... What do I mean by that? She honored, it was an honor for her to clean bishop office. Now you can do certain things out of obedience. But when it's an honor to do it, you're on a whole nother level then. Amen. It was an honor for her to clean bishop in uh, office. And like Sister Angie just mentioned, <laughs> about those sweet potato pies, those egg, those egg pies, potato pies. But she always made me preserve it. Pap preserve, fig preserve. She found out I love biscuits and salmon. Most flood kept me hooked up with some preserve. <laughs> amen, amen. And you know, she was saved and sanctified, and she didn't mind telling others about the love of Christ. I mean, come out, you know, what wasn't hesitant, wasn't shame, talking with authority, with, with a sound conviction. Not with no, uh, I guess Jesus is good, uh, you know, uh, uh, no, no. You, when she said it, you can feel it. Self-assured. Amen. She loved, and she always loved telling people who Bishop Nolan Tarbell was her pastor. And that she loved to say she's a member of True Living's Hole in this church. You know, and that was, actually, though Bishop, her pastor, being a member of True Living's Church, that was part of her vocabulary. It wasn't nothing she had to think about the sky when she meet people and greeted people. That was part of her conversation when she, when she had a dialogue with someone. You know, and I really appreciate mom for adopting my wife, which is Sister Alicia, as, as her daughter. You know, um, when mom no, we got the word that she had to have someone had to be around her 24 hours, seven days a week, right? She had to uh, leave the E's house. And a lot of you all know that she was very adamant she didn't want to go to no nursing home. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. So they began asking, say, Mom, where you want to go? You, you can't stay here. See, I want to go stay with Sister Alicia. Lisa, I'm sorry. Sister Lisa house, Sister Lisa house. So um, my wife asked me, I said, you know, I said, Babe, I'll support you 100%, you know. Sure, br bring her on, yeah. So a couple weeks ago, you know, when her health really began to fail her very quickly, you know, and when hospice said, you know, any time now, you know. And check this out, the difference. God gave me a real revelation about obedience and honor. 
when hospital asks us, say, we can take her back and let her go on out peacefully. And Sister Lisa says, nah, she's staying here. <laughs> At first, Lisa obeyed because that's what she wanted. So when she had the opportunity, she honored it. See, it's a difference when you're asked to do something and it, and it seemed good and right. But what about when you got an option? And I told her that, I said, and that, I think when, when she said that, that, that really moved me. So, you know, I'm going to say this thing, I'll, I'll be finished. Mother, always, I get off work, Alicia will be there. So when it came time for her to go to bed, Alicia called me. She just said, JJ, uh, we'll call your papa, tell him, come on, let's get mother to bed. If I was late, well, you talking about a whooping. Where you been? You just a late. But I always would get her though. So like coming home, if I had a suit on leaving church, she will say, where you been all dressed up? I said, I've been to church. I said, mother, no, no, why didn't you come to church today? Lisa didn't tell me. I said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell Bishop on you. She'll get her hand and try to hit me. You better not. <laughs> you know, so I enjoyed those sweet moments like that, those comical moments that kept her very vibrant and joyful. She enjoyed the kids, the grandkids, you know. So I like to say this to everyone. You have a mother, grandmother up in age, it ain't nothing like home. And when we moved her from the East House, we took down the pictures on the wall, the curtains, the East House apartment, we put it in our house so she can see her son, John, and everybody, and made her feel like she hadn't even left. So, John, man, your mom was a jewel. Very mom, your auntie was a jewel. Amen, in Jesus' name. I've learned how to live holy. I've learned how to live right. I've learned how to suffer. Jesus, when I see Jesus, amen. amen. 
Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Saints don't die. They sleep away. Saints don't die. They sleep away. In the morning, when, when I, I rise, rise, in the morning, when I rise, when I rise, in the morning, in the morning, when I rise, well, I'm gonna see Jesus, when I rise, well, I'm gonna see Jesus. Somebody said a minute ago she was a praiser. She would be sitting right down that second seat. Many times she'd be the first one to get on the floor. She saw it dancing. And she would say, Praise the Lord, everybody. everybody. Praise the Lord.
situation. She was able to tell us about the ups and downs. She would tell us to prepare for the storm. And she said, there's a storm on the ocean. What a praiser. She wouldn't sit in that seat looking cute. Right behind our daughter here. She was a praiser. I think God contributed that longevity because of, amen, who she was and how she liked to praise God. See, she didn't let them joints get stiff. Some of us complain about arthritis and rheumatism. I believe it's just a piece that when she began to receive a pain early on, she just get to literally get the Bible and wherever was her name, if on the knees, mother, God used her to heal people. Mother would get up when the anointing high. She would move quietly, go lay hands, and people would instantly get healed. Wow, what a jewel. Family, church family, elders, why everyone, Ursus, uh, someone dear to our hearts been taken away. When my mother passed away a few years ago, she expressed her condolences, but she said, Bishop, and she was one of the mothers said that, you know what? Your biological mama may be gone, but she said, I'll be your mother. I'm telling you, we had a jewel. Wow, this had a jewel. I mean, I tell you what, I've been, I've been dancing, I've been crying, and I've been weeping, I've been rejoicing. My God, I, I stand here with mixed emotion. You may look at her from, uh, you may look at her, you may be the niece, a nephew, from the son, a church member, caretaker, and everything, but it's totally different when you, uh, as a pastor. Wow. My God, I tell you what, she was dear. I would not even naturally and spiritually because of the things I remember. Amen. We would go up there early on and the wisdom that she would depart, even down to the, the way she ate, just healthy. We was overeating. She was the one years ago, probably 15 years ago, changed my eating habit. She said, I just eat a little toast and a little... You know, you know how she do, and, and, and praise God, but she imparted into every one of us, I really believe, in here. Wow. I tell you, it's, it's, it's something else. Amen. When you have, um, wow, someone taken away, amen, from you like that. Vera, you came up and down that road. You didn't live right around Tuskegee, but you did it. You was there to help. Would you stand? I'm telling you, you came through the rain and through the storm, my God. And thank you so much for what you did. <laughs> Praise God. I want the caretakers, because I'm not going to do that tradition. Ella Jackson did a disclaimer about preaching. I'm, I'm going to be done in just a few minutes. Every one of the caretakers, you stand. Praise God. I didn't think twice. Because they had got to the point, they got assisted, and they would stay all night. Yeah, there was a few times I wish my wife was over there beside me, but I didn't think twice when she stayed overnight, and the rest of them, they, they kept her. 
and they did that. They kept it. They had a rotating system. System. Pastor Patrick, Sister Patrick, thank y'all. Y'all did what we wanted to do. I just want to say thank you. And then when she quit driving, Lord have mercy. She had a personal show for us. Sister Florine, what raise your hand? I tell you what, I never seen such of a church, a church family. Y'all stepped up. Praise God. People watch. As Sister Karen said that, you know, being living in the same complex, and we thank God. And Sister Karen, we want to take time to thank you. Praise God. You was there. Amen. Praise God. We, we felt good. If nobody were there, it's because you was there. Amen. And all of you that been part in, in so many different ways, the grandkids, amen, praise God. You kept hearing somebody said that, how she loved her son. She just loved her family so much. She, she, she loved it. And that one that came home, and uh, I think it was a Bobby was saying he didn't have no choice. She was going to come to church. What the Bobby? He was saying yesterday, he said, whether I want to come or not. Grandma, I tell you, Grandmama said that I'm coming. Amen. So, but we just want to get that out of the way. Really, the, the eulogy, y'all can have a seat. It's, uh, it's, already been, it, it's already been done. I mean, and I just got a few talking points from the eulogy. Uh, one of the things I said, Mother was a rare and precious jewel. Praise God. I really believe if, if we would have had her in the ministry, when I had my, my long braids, when I had hair on my head, somebody, I know, uh, you, you look like, he used to have hair on his head. But we thank God, amen, truly, amen. But she was precious. She never, out of the over 20 plus years, she never gave me any problem. She prayed for us. She, she would, many times, she would check and say, I'm praying for you. She wouldn't want, like, want some of the members going out trying to scandalize a church family, and trying to scandalize a pastor. She wasn't one of them. She was one that loved her church family. She loved, it was easy for her to love her church family because she loved God. From the resolution, it said that mother was, amen, was baptized in Jesus' name. She was saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Y'all, this was a woman of Zion here. Amen. She lived a, a, a pity of life what God wants his people to live. My God, and I say to every child of God, if we could just only live the life that mother lived. I'm telling you, it was just, I mean, it's amazing. Ah, my God. She, she, she lived in a life so that everybody just seemed like she come in contact with love. And she kept a smile. The picture on the obituary, that was her. She kept a smile. And I know I was talking with uh, Sister Alicia and uh, Pastor Patrick the other day. And I said, Alicia, I know when I was over there, it was a few days before, she, I never heard a complaint. I know you all was there. When you had to get up at two or three, every few hours turning her, thank you. Y'all was there when they helped. But I, I asked, I said, did you ever hear a complaint? She said she didn't. When my wife was there, my wife would say she would just lay hands on herself. Even if it was down to the last few hours almost, she was praying for herself. Y'all, she made it. Somebody ought to give God a praise. Somebody ought to give him a praise. From the resolution, we heard, it said, uh, Mother, and only mother had a few quotes that she would say, like, thank you, darling. She was so grateful. She would say she was one of the only one, and I would tease her, she got that New York, uh, that New York uh, style about her. And everybody will say, praise the Lord. What would she say? She would say, praise him. Oh, God, she would say, praise him. Couldn't nobody say it like mother. She would say, praise him. My God, mother, she goes on and she said, love you. She had a certain sweet way, you do, I, I love you. She wouldn't say, I love you. She just said, love you. That was the last word that she told me when I saw her, when I walked out. She think it, but then she said, love you. I told her, love you, mother. She said, love you. Wow. And another thing that she said, I think Pastor Patrick said, she said, I'm going to spank you. She said that, and she would say that in a minute, okay, I'm going to spank you. And praise God, and I told somebody, yeah, mother, 90 some years old, she got a right to spank us. She got a right to do it. From the resolution, mother was a great cook. 
Lord, have mercy. And some of her can't touch this. Famous, spectacular, especially dishes were at Custer. Angel was talking about it. I don't know if you ever had any of her at Custer. Wow. Not only at Custer, them yams, she made some of the best yams. You talking about pear preserve. See, you thought you were the only one getting pear preserve. I was getting pear preserve before you were. Let, let's stop on the meal, cause I'm about to, uh, uh, John D, I'm about to get hungry here. You can't mess around with that cuss and yams and peppers, because you want to add some collard greens and, and all of them ham hocks and all of that. You want to add all of that. Until Mother Health fell, declined. She was a faithful Sunday school student. She was a faithful Bible study student and a faithful Sunday morning worshiper. When some other members would be on the patio eating when Bible study or uh, Sunday school uh, the time, amen, mother would be here and she would be here early. When some of the other didn't see the need, mother was here. My God, I'm telling you. Y'all out there tell her, I'm feeling the Holy Ghost on her. My God, mother, amen, praise God, and when, uh, praise God, and when she got to the point, uh, my just couldn't do things, and uh, well, anything else that was going on, the first service, the youth service, past pastor that we had here, I mean, it was a playful pack with youth. Mother was sitting right back there. I said, Mother, you here? Mother supported everything. She's one of a kind. She's actually one of a kind. Amen and praise God. But uh, anything that she could support, she did it. At the age of 92, it wasn't wise for her to continue to drive for various reasons. Therefore, Sister Florine became her personal driver to church. She we didn't have to worry about her mother came to church. Amen. Many times when she moved, amen, praise God. Then she came with Alicia, but mother was a faithful member. Lord have mercy. When she was no longer to drive, Lady Diane and uh, Sister Patrick became her grocery. Uh, and, and doctor appointment drivers, they would take her, my God, wherever she wanted to be, to deliver you. Uh, the caretakers, y'all did it. My God. The scripture that was read out, so spirit read out on the end, and praise God, and don't wind it down. Uh, it's the scripture that was stated on the resolution was Psalms 116 15. Precious. In the sight of the Lord is the death of his saint. Quickly, let me give you three reasons. And I'm winding down. Under grace and truth, why the death of his saint is precious in the Lord's sight. Reason number one, because Jesus died for our sins, which granted us the right to live on earth for him and die in him. Hear me and hear me well. Therefore, if we do not live on earth for him, we cannot expect to die in him. If we live on the outside and live a hellish life and don't want to give God our time, well, when we die, that's where we go in. Reason number two, because the death of a saint is freedom from trouble and pain. She had to be, but I'm telling you, God had her in a place that she never complained about pain. Some of, some of us, if we think we're going to have a toe ache next week, we start complaining. She never complained. But amen, the reason death, I said number two, because we're free. Mother is free from trouble. She's free from pain. She's free now. Mother touch so many lives. It touched my heart when the Patrick, Sister Mamie, what's the little, uh, what the little man, KJ, J, whatever his name, J, JP, and uh, said that he, every day mother had a special bond with him. And he's just a, what, a little over a year old. My God, this little man. And the next day after, amen, she, uh, her demise, 
So the little man went in there and looked for her. He was looking all under the bed. Wow, she touched. Mother loved kids. I mean, she loved everybody, but she had a way with kids. And certainly, I, I'm not going to say we're going to miss her. We miss her already. Reason number three, because we will be able to receive our crown and live eternally with him. Pastor Jerry, I heard you talk about the crown. Mother is better off than all of us. I know you was her relative. You might have been her mother, her grandmother, her auntie, a church member. I'm, uh, you know, she was my member and I'm a pastor. But she's better off than all of us. She's in the care of God. She's at rest. She's at rest now. I'm telling you, we live the life. We can say that we, if I ask the question, who I would love to see mom again, I'm sure almost every hand would go up. But in order to see mother again, because the Bible said the dead in Christ shall rise first. The Lord continued to remind me when tears were just streaming down my eyes. And he began to remind me, this is what we live holy. This day is what we live holy for. This day somebody shout holy. This is what we live holy for. Because we're going to get out of here one of these. Oh, we're going to get out of here. Ah, uh, we're going to get out of here. But one of these old days. Oh, one of these old days. I'm not going to preach it's going to be a continuation Sunday because we're going to preach. She deserves another service. Amen. This is just a eulogy and a celebration today. But next Sunday, we're going to have part B. We're going to come back and preach. But we thank God, amen, for the time he allowed us to spend with mother. Thank God, family. Y'all was not selfish for us just loving on your mom. Thank you for that. We appreciate every one of you. Is Mr. Jeffrey Harris, Harris, Harris Funeral Home, is he in the building? I want to do something, just you right now. Mr. Uh, would you come down? Yeah, bring your cell phone down, but I want to sing us some out. I want to say this, praise the Lord. One of, another one of the most proudest moment of her life is she never lived it down. They tried to find the picture, but they couldn't do it. I remember coming by talking to your mother. We're getting ready to celebrate her 90th birthday. You didn't hesitate. We just want to do something special for mother. We want to do something special. And you did not hesitate in the, when I told you about the, with the limousine and I think, was it Sister Patrick? I think I met her down there. And you would have thought she was Michelle Obama. She never, I mean, she never stopped. And I want to say thank you for planting a seed. It will forever live. I mean, it just, I mean, it, it, it personally with me because she was my mom also. But they meant just to love you and your staff, what y'all have shown. We want to say thank you. Amen so much. I want to do last, make a decor, decoration. Because of Mother Floyd outpouring of love for the kingdom of God, her loyalty for her pastor, church family, her family, and others as well, I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, that in the very near future, the office that she cleaned so diligent, and at the age of 90, I had to tell her, mother, don't get up on that, in them chairs, in the most. She was on, y'all remember, she was on top cleaning the cabin at the age of 90. But because of that, in the very near future, the pastor's office will be renamed in her memory. You will see her name on that door and at the other door. Because it was, I want to say this, he came to me, we paid, the church paid a company, we had a cleaning company to come in for years 
So when we got to the decision, my uh, staff, we all met and we're trying to save money. So we said the church was going to do it. She came to me, almost looked like with tears in her eyes and said, Bishop, let me clean your office. I just want to let, I want to clean your office. Wow. That reason. I tell you what, my wife and I, we can't say enough. We thank y'all. Because we literally look, I ain't got contractors. Because we wanted to move her with us. All our bedroom was on the third floor. We got three levels. And I looked at closing the den, and I looked at her. We've got two sets of steps. I said, either way, she would have to come. Uh, you know, they go and up and down. But I thank God for even what Mother said, and y'all stepped up. Wow. Thank you so much. We're going to come back. This is not, like I said, wasn't a tradition. We're going to come back. We're going to preach next Sunday because she deserved a message to come in behind this. We're going to give her a celebration. We can't be here all day and all night. But once again, thank you, Mr. Harris, you and your staff. Amen. Praise God. Y'all already always on time. And thanks again. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for every one of you. Amen. Poor fit conductor as well. We thank God for you conducting this service. Amen. God bless you. Amen. In Jesus' name. We'll ask the choir to get ready to sing uh, uh, exit song. I believe is that's it. Praise God. And uh, we're going to get ready to... Uh, praise God and uh, get out of here but we thank God for you we love you so much be encouraged be encouraged just be encouraged and for a fact we want everyone in the building to stand we're going to just close it out with a quick prayer everyone family you standing that means you're going to stand in her memory you're going to stand in the things of God as you reflect back over. That's what you stand standing for. You're going to stand in the power of God because we all need him. Father, we declare by the power of God. We glorify, we magnify your name. And Lord, we ask you to touch. Lord, we are so grateful for all the years you allowed mother to be a part of our lives. And for that reason, we say thank you. Lord, we love you so much for being an awesome God. We ask you, oh God, to touch right now in the name of Jesus, the Christ we pray. Help us to reflect. And Lord, is there one today that in our midst that have not been baptized in the name of Jesus and filled with the Holy Ghost and know you according to the scripture? Deal with them right now. If we're, there is one that not living a life according to mother, stand up as she lived according to the word of God. Touch that heart. Touch that mind, that boy, that woman, that girl. Woman, touch. Touch right now. And Father, we believe it is done right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Quiet.